So it's time for us to go ahead and get to painting because we've decided that we're doing uh, gloss white or something gloss white. What we're using is PPG Timeless Interior Paint and Primer. Excellent for doing a one coat finish so you don't have to sit there and do seven coats or use different paints and primers. So first thing you do, of course, you shake it up. I did that off camera because no one wants to sit there and watch you shake up a paint can. And this isn't fully sealed, didn't realize it. So that could have been really bad because we've got paint everywhere. We'll go ahead and remove that. Still nice, glossy and white, even though this is like a year old. And before you actually use your brush, I'm just using a simple, you know, uh, edge cut or what was it? Whatever the word is for that. Anyway, a simple cut brush, dampen a little bit. So it's not wet, like by any means, you know, you can see just a fair little bit of water in there. That way when you go to put your paint in there, it's a lot easier to clean out later. Go ahead, dip your brush in, do it nice and nice and wet, make sure there's no drips. And the easiest way to transfer a brush to your surface without actually getting drips anywhere, turn your brush as you go, and that will ensure that it doesn't drip. And then I usually just start in the middle and just spread it around. Now this can be a nice, quick and simple process for us. You have to move this paint bucket in a minute, but that's fine. Right now I'm just getting paint on there, get it nice and thick and then I'm going to worry about actually spreading it out effectively. And the nice thing about this paint is it is a thicker acrylic paint. This isn't latex based. So it does fill in a little bit better than just regular latex based paints, which are thinner. Now you do have to spend a little bit more for this stuff. It's uh, I think like 30 bucks a gallon compared to 25, but it's worth it. Single coat coverage. All right, so now that we've got the majority of it covered, Go ahead and start to feather it in everywhere. So right now you can see a lot of brush strokes and everything like that. That's fine. After you get everything fully coated, then you're going to worry about getting all your brush strokes out. And that's why you go a little bit thicker, that way you have more paint to move around. Okay, so we've got to move our gallon, set it down around. Hope Izion does not step in it. Fortunately, he's white, so he does, not too big of a deal. And I'm going to hit all the edges on the inside too. But like the crack that we had there, I didn't have to worry about filling it in because the paint is actually going to do a good job for us. All right, so once you have your surface fully covered, make sure not to deposit a large amount of paint on the outside edges because it does drip off, which is normal. Uh, so I always plan for a little bit of drippage like over here, just cause it's easier to coat the inside that way. So I never worry about why I get paint on. If you're worried, of course, mask everything off. Uh, for this, this is my workshop or workbench table. So it's normal. Uh, once you do have your paint fully across the area, do even brush strokes all the way across. So that way everything flows in one direction. You don't want to have paint strokes going all over here cause that looks terrible. So I'll just go back. If you have a high quality paint, it does level out. Also, if you go a little bit thicker with your paint, it levels out as well. All right, so we need a little bit more paint. Right along the edge here. And I'm not gonna show us painting the backside of it, but what we actually have this on are little uh, painting triangles. And these work great, but they do have a little flaw. Um, if you're painting something heavy, such as a door, it, they are, small enough that they will actually imprint into the door with uh, with the tip of them. So just keep that in mind. If, uh, if you are painting something that's a little bit heavier, you might just want to use a flat surface and wait for it to fully dry in between flipping it over. Otherwise you might have small dots on your door. I know this because, well, I did it. There wasn't a whole lot I could do after the fact either. that literally dented the door. I mean, it was a cheap door. It wasn't a solid court or a solid door. It was just a, uh, one of those interior doors that's hollow on the inside. But still annoying nonetheless. All right, so right now we're still just putting our thicker coat on for the front here. Like I said, there's a reason to spend a little bit more on a higher quality paint compared to those cheap latex paints. This is both a primer and paint in one. So everything gets sealed 
you know, all in that first coat. Now, if you want, you can always put a second coat. There's never any issue with doing so with this. It's just not necessary. Um, I may end up doing so just so that way it has a, a slightly better finish. But if we look here, it's nice, it's clean, it's completed. I haven't done the backside yet because there's a camera there, but that's it. One coat and it's done. I will probably end up doing a second coat just so that way it's nice and thick on there because this will end, you know, get scrubbed down because it's going to be a windowsill. But that's all for now. We will touch base once it's all done and show it actually going up on the windowsill. To go ahead and finish the windowsill insulation, we're going to need a few things. Obviously the windowsill itself, some caulking, which I prefer DAP's Quick Seal Ultra, some painter's tape for when we go to actually apply the caulking, and you have one of two mounting methods. You can either use an adhesive-based mounting, such as Loctite Power Grab to glue the, the windowsill down, or you can use a brad nailer. I'm actually going to use both here just for demonstration purposes. Now we're going to go ahead and start by putting down a bead of adhesive caulking here. You don't really need a whole lot. Going to do one in the front here, and then one in the back, just to make sure it's fully adhered down. Now that we have our adhesive down, we're going to go ahead and place our windowsill. So go up over the adhesive initially, get it set in. Make sure it's a nice tight fit, and then press down. So with the adhesive, you would you know, put a weight on here for a few minutes, and that's good. But we're also using a brad nailer. So if you're also using a brad nailer, go ahead, remember where your wood is, because if you're going to concrete, it's not going to work, and put, usually I do three brad nails, one at each end and one in the middle. So, one, two, switch hands, three. And that's enough to hold it down. From here, we can go ahead and move on to putting our tape on, putting our caulking in, and that's it. So next thing we're going to do is mask off both our windowsill and the window edge itself because we don't really want our caulking to go everywhere. Go ahead, find out about how much you need, cut it. And yes, you can tear it, but I want to have a clean edge go in the corners. So cut. Go ahead, one piece here. Really hard to do this. Got weird angles. Normally I would be up on a step stool, but for recording purposes, we are not. And then tuck this in right here. So when we do get to this edge here with the sealant it, or with the caulking, it's gonna be a little difficult. We're just gonna go to right here. All right, so now we do the same thing coming out. Now you don't have to mask off before you put down your your caulking. For me, it's just easier for me to get a cleaner edge this way and cleaner bead, so I prefer to do it. Now 
let's see. Can I go ahead and do this without hitting the camera or being completely in the way? Well, I felt myself hit the camera. That's nowhere close. We'll put that down afterward because I can't uh, can't do that with the camera on. And get it where I want. We'll do that one off camera. Now we have to do back here and back there. Measure out. Stick. Cut one. Once again, this is going to be difficult because I can't actually see where I'm putting this. But we're going to say, well, once I get done fighting with it, we're going to say right here is good for video purposes. I will move it later. Guaranteed. All right, and then one on the back. That one I can actually see, so we can get them decent. For this one, we get a little bit bigger. We're going to go on to the actual the other piece of tape that we have. Go ahead and cut. that down. All right, so we're going to cut the camera real quick. I'm going to fix my lines and then we're going to come back to caulking. So now it's time to actually do the caulking and I'm up on a stool here. So whenever we do this, we're going to fill in the bead that we have and then remove the excess. That's why we have the tape. So go ahead. Let's set this a little bit higher. Now I've done a couple of videos now where I've done caulking. So everyone can see it's not my specialty. If we had a gap that was bigger than three eighths of an inch, we would want to use backer rod. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> so this is not a brand new, uh, brand new tube. So there was some in there that was dried up a bit. I usually go about halfway, and then go the other way. Oh man, this could be right in the camera. Fill in. Yeah, bigger than three-eighths of an inch or even a quarter of an inch of a gap, you would use back rod down in there. Okay. And that would fill in the gap and then you'd put your caulking over. Come over this corner. And I am putting way too much caulking in here. I know that, so it's not my specialty. But you can always remove it. It's very easy to do. I shut the camera again. Also, I'm really bad with the caulking gun. That's why I have an electric one. All right, so next up, Grab a paper towel and use your method of choice to remove the excess caulking. In my case, I like to actually use a tool for this. Uh, you can get these from Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere. All it is is a piece of silicone plastic. You could wet your finger, go across. I don't like the feeling of caulking in my finger, so I don't do that. Just put the tip in the corner and drag it across. Oh, look at that beautiful mess. The great thing about what we do with the masking off and making a mess doesn't matter. So like any place that you see where there's a bubble or anything like that, just go ahead and press your excess caulking into it. And 
then I just wipe off all the excess onto your paper towel. And I like to give it just one more go over just to make sure everything's nice and clean. there and then you can go ahead and move all this and apparently repaint the section of wall that just had paint rip off that's fine now we do have one thing that just happened right there that we're going to go over in just a second no redos here. We record once and then live with our mistakes. The only time we ever re-record is if the recording just doesn't happen. You know. And be careful when you're removing your tape because you don't want to hit anything with the lowered amount of caulking you have on everything. All right, all right, set that down the sink. So we have one issue over in this corner. We can see where our caulking actually lifted off. So what we're gonna do, wet your finger. I wish you could be my sink is right below me and just smooth it out. If you wet your finger, it does not really stick to you all that well. And there you go done so I'll smooth over right here a little bit more we are good to go you have your windowsill installed and you have your caulking added so it is now waterproof stay tuned for a third video where we go about what you put under windowsill because most people don't just leave them as a windowsill so there's the windowsill all completed nice pretty white and we have it attached the only thing we didn't do is anything underneath because there is actually something that most people do instead of just leaving a windowsill natural like this. Uh, if you wanted to leave it just like this, you would just put more caulking underneath. I'm going to be putting a piece of trim. We'll do that in a third quick little video. So if you want to see that when it comes out, make sure to sub subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll stay up to date with new content that comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.